Hi, my name is Andy Brunner, and I am a medical oncologist here at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I have uh, had the pleasure of going to ASH uh, in December 2021 and seeing some of the updates that were uh, ongoing in myelodysplastic syndrome management and diagnosis. And I think that for patients who have high-risk disease, there's a lot of interest in really changing the standard of care. I presented an abstract that's looking at a trial ongoing now in phase two and phase three, combining a drug that targets the immune system and may also target uh, leukemic progenitors. Uh, it's a drug called sabotolumab or MBG453. And it's an antibody that targets a molecule on the surface of cells called TIM3. That uh, molecule may play a role both in our immune system's recognition of malignant cells as well as in uh, the rejuvenation or renewal of uh, leukemic progenitors or MDS uh, progenitors. We explored sabotolumab uh, in combination with either azacitidine or decitabine in a phase 1B uh, study, um, essentially looking to see can we safely combine this uh, agent as well as what are some early uh, signs of response. And, what we've found so far is that we can add this uh, agent to azacitidine or decitabine. There were a few immune-related uh, toxicities, but none were uh, severe, and they all responded to steroids, which is a little distinct from some of the other immune checkpoint therapies that have been explored in MDS. Um, we also found that uh, we saw responses across a number of uh, patients, including patients who had poor risk mutations, and those responses preliminarily seem uh, durable. So the median duration of response was 17 months. Um, and that held true for some patients who historically have not had very uh, prolonged durations of responses, such as patients with TP53 mutations. Um, so these, uh, this combination is really being explored in a phase two randomized setting, as well as a phase three randomized setting and hopefully, as we follow patients on those studies, we'll see whether this durability of response and uh, this uh, new tech, uh, target of therapy in MDS um, plays a role. I think in general, uh, the ASH uh, abstracts showed a number of uh, emerging therapies uh, for the treatment of high-risk MDS. And so in many ways, it's an exciting time. Um, there are a few therapies borrowed from AML that may be available. Uh, really, these are still in the uh, clinical trial stage of evaluation, but there are abstracts looking at a different type of induction chemotherapy. So CPX351 or liposomal donorubicin and cytarabine was explored in high-risk MDS. And, and it showed that many patients could have a blast reduction um, and be bridged to allogeneic transplant, which remains the only curative therapy for MDS. So I think for select patients, especially those who have AML-like features, um, it's worth considering an induction-like regimen um, even today. Uh, similarly, uh, venetoclax combined with azacitidine, a combination that's been approved in the treatment of AML is also being explored in MDS. There are a number of differences between how these drugs are combined in MDS. And so it's important to uh, really consider that if it's going to be attempted. And in general, we still are recommending people do it in the setting of a clinical trial. Um, that said, for some patients who have an AML-like disease, perhaps MDS with an NPM1 mutation, which is a relatively rare, but uh, you know, identifiable subgroup of patients, um, they may benefit more from an AML-like regimen, such as uh, an anticlax combined with azacitidine. The dosing is distinct, it should be noted, uh, with 14 days, and a lot more monitoring is needed than with azacitidine alone to make sure that um, you're not overly suppressing the bone marrow. And so in general, I think that there are a lot of exciting combinations being moved forward in a higher-risk MDS. Uh, many of them are in phase three development, and so we're excited to see if in the next couple of years we really can change the standard of care. 
Some of the other drugs that were presented at ASH and that are in later phase development include other drugs targeting the immune response against tumors. So megrolimab is an anti-CD47 antibody, and that's being explored in MDS in a late phase study, as well as APR246, which has completed a phase three study, and we're awaiting results looking at TP53 mutated MDS. And so I think that um, really for patients who have high risk MDS, there's a lot of clinical activity um, trying to change the standard of care. Um, our understanding of the disease as well, including our understanding of the mutations that, can, uh, that give rise to MDS has really advanced in the last few years. And so it's a whole uh, new approach to the disease that I think really holds promise. As for what these treatments mean for patients, in general, I think an important thing to remember is that we need to validate um, any combinations uh, in really randomized settings in MDS. There are a number of phase three studies, and I would encourage, as I do for any of my patients, uh, patients with higher risk MDS to consider the role of a clinical trial. Um, unfortunately, we haven't upset azacitidine in the last 15 years as the really frontline standard of care for therapy. Um, and that's what makes it so important to test these agents in a randomized fashion so that we can be certain that a combination truly is better than what we uh, currently have available. I think another really important thing that patients should consider is the role of mutation testing of their disease. Um, both at diagnosis, mutations really have an important prognostic role, but also may lend uh, light on some therapeutic interventions, such as mutations in IDH1, IDH2, or FLT3. Um, although many of those are rare, those can really have implications for a patient. Similarly, I think that mutation testing at the time of disease progression is really important. People can acquire mutations in their disease that then can be targeted at times, or before a major intervention. I think one of the areas that we're learning a lot about is the role of mutation reduction or disease reduction prior to transplant, particularly for patients who are receiving an, a reduced intensity regimen of conditioning prior to their transplant. And so when possible, trying to optimize disease prior to transplant, often measured by looking at certain mutations um, in the disease can be important. And so I think we have a new uh, tool set really to look at MDS. So when you're um, approaching high risk MDS, I think the important things to discuss with your physician are, you know, what kind of disease you have and what is your goal of therapy? Is your goal curative to go to transplant? Is the goal really to identify targets uh, for treatment? Um, is the goal to maintain uh, treatment as long as possible. Um, and based on that goal, really to identify perhaps a clinical trial if available, or to think about an overall treatment course um, based on goal-directed therapy. With that, um, appreciate the time to chat today and uh, hope all is well.